Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. In this episode, we're going to take a look at our February satellite and radio communications-themed issues technical articles. The cover story is a sub-terahertz MIMO testbed for 6G research, written by Keysight. And I saw this set up later last year, and I was so impressed with the data rates that were achieved by it that we invited them to contribute this story, so check that out. Eric, what do we have for other technical articles? Uh, thanks, Pat. Well, it's another issue chock full of good stuff. Uh, there's an article from MathWorks that discusses Leo SATCOM system design challenges. Uh, so that article gets into some of the trends and challenges facing designers in that market. Uh, supporting the radio communications part of the February theme, we have an article from ADI that digs into some of the details of DAS, distributed antenna systems. Uh, so that talks about the need for DAS systems, and the article gets into transceiver and system block diagrams, uh, so lots of interesting information there. And I don't have time for every technical article, uh, but the last one I'll mention is an article from Marquee Microwave that discusses some of the tools they use and make available uh, to simplify the mimic filter design process. And uh, there were several more articles, so please take a look. And uh, turning to the news, big acquisition happenings last week as Corvo announced a definitive agreement to acquire Noki Wave and Amphenol announced a definitive agreement to acquire Carlisle Intertech Technologies business for $2 billion in cash. And both stated that the acquiring company's products are complementary, which seems to be the thing that they always do, and we'll see how that works out. Also, the Air Force Research Laboratory and Raytheon successfully completed a three-week field test of the counter-electronic high-power microwave extended range air-based defense system, or Chimera for short, and that's a high-power microwave weapon. And during the test, Chimera applied directed energy to multiple static target variations and demonstrated end-to-end -end fire control by acquiring and tracking aerial targets and maintaining the tracking for the entire flight path. The Chimera system was built for firing highly concentrated radio energy at multiple medium to long range targets is kind of a first line of defense. And recently did a podcast with Raytheon on the Chimera system. So check that out at podcast.microjournal.com. And you also find another recent podcast with Qualcomm on 5G Advanced and the road to 6G covering the upcoming features of the 3G PP release 19. Eric, what do you see in the news? Well, we had several news items reporting new market research. Uh, so let me summarize, because it was a bit of a mixed bag. Our friends at uh, Del Oro Group were busy. They released a report saying that after strong previous growth and a decline this past year, uh, the RAND market is now on a longer-term downward trajectory. They're a little more optimistic about ORAN, uh, acknowledging that it will decline in 2023, but while they expect market conditions to remain challenging, the long-term forecast remains positive. Now, they are even more optimistic about broadband access equipment, uh, acknowledging a decline in 2023, but pointing out trends that will lead to growth in this segment. Uh, we also highlighted a report from Juniper Research that's forecasting quick subscriber uptake for 6G at the end of the decade and how important reconfigurable intelligent surfaces will be in that segment. Uh, so take a look at our news channel, and you can get more details from all these reports. And for events, I attended DesignCon in Santa Clara, which was very busy. Good attendance there. And there's no doubt that the main topic was 224 gigabit per second systems, with most of the exhibitors engaged in a portion of the system, and there were demos everywhere. And as the speeds get that high, the PCBs have uh, too much loss for the long reaches, so cabling becomes a more critical thing. And you can see all different variations of cabling that solve those problems. I published a complete summary on Signal Integrity Journal, so you can check that out. So I will be heading shortly to uh, Barcelona for Mobile World Congress and catch up on 5G Advanced and 6G efforts. And plus, I'm seeing a lot of activity in Wi-Fi 7. So I hope to see what's going on in that area, too. And I'll report back next month on what I saw. And if your company is interested in meeting in Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, please give me a ring. Eric, how about you for events? Well, we have a couple of good panel sessions coming up. Uh, Pat mentioned 224 gigabit per second systems at DesignCon, and we have a Signal Integrity Journal panel session on February the 23rd 
on this topic. And uh, on the Microwave Journal side of things, we have a panel on March 26th entitled, Will Flat Panel Beam Steering Arrays Meet the SATCOM Challenge? And if you'd like your company to participate in this panel, please contact us. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is RFMW, and RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products, and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And uh, please remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thanks for watching, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.